Hi everyone, it's Heidi from flutterbyheidi.co.uk back again with another Sunday scoring project and this time it's part of my half full week um, and it's this lovely um, modified book fold card here which kind of um, comes down to a sort of five and a half inch square um, base and as you can see here, it's using these lovely um, images. And this time I thought I'd use the Christmas um, images within the stamp set. Um, because the great thing about this stamp set is it hasn't just got Christmas. Um, although, obviously, you know, I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. But if the white runs out, I'll drink red. You know, there's some great sentiments in here. Um, but you can use them all year round, which is why I think this is going to be a, a, a real keeper in terms of stamp sets. So this is the card. And you can see it folds flat. Um, needs a bit of sort of preparation, in as much as um, this bit here, you can, hopefully you can see, are uh, really sort of glossy, um, and I've actually used. Uh, I'll show you how I've I've got that effect. But you do need to leave that time um, to to dry, preferably overnight. To be honest with you. So that's the card we're making. I'm going to make it in centimeters on film. I will put the inch dimensions uh, onto my blog so that you can get those. Um, as well um, and uh, off we go then so obviously you're going to need your uh, trimmer um, there we go so start off with you're going to need a piece of cardstock and you're going to cut that down to 28 by 14 centimeters so we're going to cut 14 centimeters and then just trim it down to 28 like so and then in the portrait, so short edge at the top, um, we're going to make some cut, the, we're going to do the cuts first. So you're going to start at, um, at uh, 12 centimetres. And we are going to cut from, this is where my head will get in the way. We're going to cut from 12 to 23 centimetres. So 12, is just here, down to 23, like so. And then we're going to do it at the same at two centimeters. Now, normally I would do that on the other side, but it is just easier um, in this instance to, to do it in the same way because you're making parallel score lines. So I'm literally just going to do that like so. And from 23, up to 12. Okay, so those are our cuts. Now we're going to do the scoring. So with the cut lines to the right hand side, we're going to be scoring at seven centimeters all the way top to bottom. At 12 centimeters, we're going to score just between the score lines. So that's from two down to 12 just between the score lines. So just lift it up and just double check. There you go, like so. Uh, then we're going to move it to 14. And this is where you're going above and below the score line. So you see there, I've come down from the top up from the bottom. Then you're going to score at 21 centimeters. And that again is between the score lines and at 23 centimetres between the score lines. Okay, and that's our scoring done. Okay, so because it's fancy fold um, and the way, because it's got sort of cuts in between, burnish as far as much as you can in the direction of those score lines to start off with. So like so. And these are sort of the tricky ones because they're, oh, I haven't cut through very well on that one. Okay. Right. This ha I obviously didn't press down very hard. There we go. There we go. So just bring a craft knife in. Um, Just 
open those right and then this is the kind of tricky bit um what i would say is this is where it is worth just easing this so this is going to come up and this is where i work from the far end and this one is going to come up and these two are going to come down so literally if you work from the end like so fold and burnish there we go and so it, it, you know it, it, it's just a case of easing it so you don't get any additional creases and then turn over and really reinforce those fold lines like so so that's our card base so that's the kind of that's the most difficult bit about it because the rest of it is um is just fun decorating so the next thing i've got then is some of the new uh, designer series paper uh, so i've cut um some card layers so i'm using this one is cherry cobbler i'm using some garden green layers here and um, this is 6.5 by 13.5 this is 4.5 by 13.5. Then we've got our layer, which is 6 by 13, and our layer here, which is 4 by 13. So I'm simply going to use my snail and layer those up. So that just gives the um, half centimetre border which is sort of ends up sort of, sort of two, two and a bit mil on either side to give our layers. This one, I always struggle to get things straight. Uh, so again, just come in with us now. Because this is flat card, we can use our snail. Um, and by flat card, what I mean is this, these parts aren't, aren't moving or bending at all. So snail is great for, for flat layers. Um, if, you, if you were uh, making a box or something that's sort of where the card is folded and, and bending against itself, you needed to stay in a certain position, then you'd use, um, use fuse. Right, so we've done our front layers. Uh, the next part is our front panel. Um, and this is 8.5 by 9.5 layer for the middle there. And then we've got an eight by nine centimeter layer of Whisper White. Now we're not going to stick that on because obviously we want to do some stamping first. Um, and then I've got a panel for the reverse of the card as well, which you can see here, which I've actually made slightly, um, slightly smaller, so it's got a slightly bigger border. Um, um, and obviously that's optional, what, you know, how many layers you want to put on the back there, um, depending on how special the recipient is. If you could just put a, a plain piece of um, what Whisper White card in there if you wanted to. Okay, so, so on to the stamping then. So the first part of the stamping is the centre panel of the card, which I've got here. Um, I've misplaced my embossing buddy, so I'm just going to have to uh, wing it and hope that I haven't, got to, haven't put my greasy paw prints on too many things. Um, give a quick... What you would normally do is put your embossing buddy on that, but as I said, I, I've misplaced mine. So I'm using um, the stamp set, the Merry Christmas um, from that. And let's just attach. There we go. This is where it all goes wrong, so I go all wonky. So Versamark ink, so this is the sticky pigment ink. Um, and I'm just going to come in making sure we've got it in the right orient correct orientation so it's in sort of portrait and we're just going to put uh, Merry Christmas in Versamark. Then I'm going to come in and over a piece of scrap paper I'm just going to pop uh, silver embossing powder over there like so. And those of you who've seen it was a little while ago now. I'm going to put that away and put the lid on straight away because otherwise I knock it everywhere. Right, so that's our embossed um, powder, embossing powder. Here comes the noise. So just heat this up. 
I'm going to do it hopefully from underneath so you can see as that heats up you'll just watch as all of a sudden that sort of matte effect will become shiny there you go there it goes so don't heat for too long don't overheat but you can see now you've got a lovely glossy effect um, so that's our Merry, Merry Christmas um, and what I'm going to do now is come in and do the glasses along the bottom edge so I'm using some archival ink here and I'm simply going to line those up along the bottom edge and stamp and then come in and just stamp again like so and then I've got our cherry cobbler um, marker here and using the brush tip end I'm just going to come in and just very quickly fill those and obviously I'm using cherry cobbler one because it looks like a really good burgundy um, but also because um, we've used the cherry cobbler cardstock so if you were using real red then you might choose to use um, real red for this as well um, but you'll see when I do this sort of glossy effect on the other one that actually um, it lightens it slightly so this sort of cherry cobbler is a really good colour for doing that so literally just come in and even our part glass will just come in like so and then as usual we're, we're sort of going to ground our images so that's just coming in with a little bit of grey on the bottom there and at the background so it looks like they're on a sort of a, on a table Okay. and again you could do as much or as little um, colouring as you wanted there now I'm going to come in with my cherry cobbler ink and do the second part of the stamping so this is the may your glass always be half full so again just pop that And then to do the little holly berries, again it's another Im image, and this is where I'm using my garden green and cherry cobbler once, just to do some partial um, stamping. So here, we use the brush tip, but come in on its side, and basically if you go over it a couple of times, huff on it, because it will start to dry, and then you've got your image. So again, just come in from the side, and the more you sort of go over, the less of streakiness you're going, you're going to get. It's never you know, quite as good as the. Um, okay. So you get the idea. Just colour in the parts of the stamp that you want to use with the side of your brush marker, and there we are. Um, again, just come in with our. Snail on the back there, and then we can layer our front up. And on the right hand side, I just use some sequin trim, and all I've done here is literally just cut sort of three little pieces of sequin trim of different lengths. Just to add a little bit of a bit of fun. Those who watch my video, I don't don't do I don't normally do sequins too much, but you know, Christmas is, is different. And then what I use are my glue dots. So you can see here, I just use my pokey tool, piercing tool, whatever you like to call it, and I pop that behind 
the top one and just literally attach that like so and then repeat with with your with your um, with your others so it's just making sure that it's going to lie in the right direction um, and you can then have them up or down depending on what you prefer like so and again I, I keep my a piece of ribbon tied around my glue just to stop them just opening up and um, it's just a, a good way of making sure that um, because otherwise my I, I get to my glue dots and I find they're sort of unraveled everywhere so just a little tip there for you so there we go just to add some sequins a little bit of a, a, a sequiny feel to it a little bit of Christmas and then on to our um, other images so what you're going to do is take a scrap of wisp white and um, cardstock and literally it can, can be whatever cardstock um, you know you, you prefer, the thick or the, or the ordinary. And the technique is exactly the same whichever um, whichever cardstock you're, you're going to use. And then take the image that you want to colour. You're going to stamp it in our archival black. And because we're going to be cutting it out, you know, you literally just take a scrap that you happen to have. So there's my scrap, and it's the same for the wine glass. Um, and you come in and start off by colouring it. So we're going to come in and literally just colour like so. I'll do the top section just to for speed. So once you've coloured it, you then want to get your fine tip glue and you literally are going to outline around the outside edge of that. I always outline first because it kind of starts to dry there first and it sort of contains your glue. And then come in and literally it's as if you're colouring Try and keep it on um, in contact so you don't get any air bubbles. If you do get any air bubbles, just come in with a pin and you literally just colour it like so. And when you've finished, put it to one side. And you can see that's gone quite dark there. I leave the label um, part portion of it unglossed um, because I figure it's paper label so it wouldn't be glossy. And then when you've finished, 24 hours later, you'll have an image like this. And where you get little air bubbles, actually, it just adds some nice texture. And literally all you need to do then is come in and cut out your images around the outside edge because that will have gone just nice and glossy. And this is a lovely way for anything that's a glass um, or sort of a, a glossy that you want to, um, that would be sort of shiny in the real world, a lovely way of getting that on there and if you just have cut on just on the line there we go and obviously you could colour your label if you wanted to I've done that before now with uh, using stuff sort of, uh, sort of so saffron things like that so there's our bottle we do the same with our wine glass And then all that's left to do is to layer those up using dimensionals on the front of the card. And there you have a fold flat modified book fold card using the half full stamp set. So don't forget if you want to um, any of the products just follow the link and go to my shop. Come back and see me again soon. Bye for now.